Welcome back. In our second training tutorial, we'll discuss how to accurately measure and calculate body fat percentage, as well as some terrific additional features inside the Measure tab. We'll use a demonstration mode initially to explain some important differences between male and female body composition formulas and also provide you with some general recommendations. Demonstration mode is an option that can be used for quick assessments without having to create client profiles and a great feature when using the body metric system at fitness fairs, community events, or for attracting prospective clients into your business. From your Welcome to Body View home screen, select the demonstration mode icon. This brings you to the Body View tab where you can input your client's name, their age, gender, height, as well as their current body weight. Next, click on the Measure tab and select the appropriate athletic type from the drop-down menu located under the Trends tab, Non-Athletic, Athletic, or Elite. Once you've made your selection, you can now choose your body composition formula from the drop-down menu here on the left. There's a wide variety of choices depending on what your methodology is, but the Jackson and Pollock formulas are commonly used and widely seen in academic research. You'll notice both the three-site Jackson and Pollock as well as a seven-site Jackson and Pollock formula. Generally speaking, the three-site formula is a good formula for males, very quick and efficient. Notice that when switching to the female gender, there's both a three-site Jackson and Pollock formula as well as a four-site Jackson and Pollock formula. The four-site formula includes the waist measurement and provides immense value because excessive abdominal adipose tissue correlates highly with chronic disease, including diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. It's important to note that the difference in body fat percentage between a three-site Jackson and Pollock assessment and the seven-site formula is really marginal, only up to 1.5% difference in most cases. Now that we've discussed formula selection and the differences between male and female formulas, let's begin measuring. After selecting your formula, apply a dime-sized amount of gel to the head of the body metrics device as shown. Next, click and highlight the thigh side point. There are two option buttons to perform measuring, single point and measure percent BF. The measure percent BF button guides you straight through each side point and records the measurement in millimeters. However, it's recommended to use the single point button as this gives you more control over each side point making it easy to override the automatic peak detection with the ultrasound signal if necessary. After clicking on single point, place the device on the side point and without pressing the button, spread a thin layer of gel by moving the device up and down approximately one inch. When you're ready to make a measurement, press the button on the device and move the device up and down at a comfortable speed making sure to stay within the one inch area for three to four seconds and then let go of the button. The measurement wizard dialog box will prompt you for a second measurement, so repeat the same process by again pressing the button and moving it up and down for three to four seconds. You're moving the device about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch on either side of the measurement point. This technique is called averaging, which gives you a signal here in the measurement data graph displaying clearly defined characteristic peaks. The first strong peak is generally the fat muscle interface, which lines up nicely with the red vertical line, displaying the fat thickness at 7.6 millimeters, here in yellow. The second peak is a boundary between two big muscle groups, the vastus lateralis and vastus intermedius. Next, we'll demonstrate measuring without using the averaging technique. In this example, we'll press the button for a fraction of a second without moving the body metrics device. The resulting measurement data graph in this case shows an unaveraged signal with many fine, thin peaks representing various tissue structure. Keep in mind that the body metrics transmits a narrow beam of ultrasound that detects tissue structure along that beam. So it's very important to move the device and average the signal because it eliminates the fine structure which is not of interest when we're measuring fat layer thickness and leaves you with clean interfaces such as the fat muscle interface or muscle bone interface. I'll go ahead and repeat the measurement again to show you the difference here.
When the two measurements are completed, the software gives you the option to repeat the measurement or not repeat it. It's always a good idea to examine your measurement data graph to ensure that the software has chosen the correct ultrasound peak. In this case, we can look at the graph and that first strongest peak lines up very nicely with this red vertical line, which is an indication of a good, accurate measurement. So in this case, it's not necessary to repeat the measurement. We'll go ahead and select no. There may be occasions where the software prompts you to take a third measurement, and that's just because the first two measurements disagreed by more than 10%. Next, click on the chest side point and then click the single point button. It's not necessary to wipe the device clean between measurements, but you may need to add just a small amount of gel to ensure it slides easily on the skin. Spread the gel within the optimal area, and using the averaging technique, press the button and slide the body metrics device diagonally back and forth, quarter of an inch to a half an inch on either side of the side point. Then go ahead and repeat the measurement. The fat thickness is 9.2 millimeters, and as you can see, the first large characteristic peak again lines up with the red vertical line when we analyze the graph. So you'll go ahead and select no from the dialog box to move on to the next point. Click and highlight the waist, and again, select the single point button. Apply the gel in the same manner as your previous measurements and spread a thin layer moving the device side to side beginning one inch to the right of the umbilicus or your belly button. You'll use the averaging technique again, and when you're ready to measure, press the button and slide the device side to side at a comfortable speed for three to four seconds and let go of the button. Repeat the same process for your second measurement. This graph illustrates a very important point with regard to the waist measurement. The true fat muscle interface is not necessarily the first peak. Remember from our first tutorial that the athletic type settings act as a helpful tool for the software to choose the most likely peak representing the true fat muscle interface and does not explicitly enter into the calculation of body fat percentage. Had you selected the elite setting, the software will choose the first strong characteristic peak in the waist measurement, as we can see in this example here. This makes sense as elite individuals' fat thicknesses normally range between approximately 3 to 10 millimeters in most cases. In analyzing the measurement data graphs, 25 millimeters is a great reference point to consider as it's equal to one inch of fat or a noticeable fold of fat that you can typically grab or pinch in the waist. On the other hand, 8 millimeters is a third of an inch, which is a thinner layer that you could poke possibly, but not a significant fold. In looking at your client's waist, it should be very easy to see in most cases if they have considerably more or less than 25 millimeters or an inch. Using this helpful reference, it's clear that the software in this case did in fact choose the appropriate characteristic peak at 18 which represents the true fat muscle interface for this particular measurement. In examining the measurement data graph further, the first peak for this waist measurement represents a thin layer of connective tissue within the fat known as a fascia. This fascia separates two distinctive layers of fat in the waist. Superficial adipose tissue, or SAT, is the layer between the skin and this first fascia peak, and the deeper adipose tissue, or DAT, is the layer between the fascia peak and the true fat muscle interface here at 18 millimeters. The deep adipose tissue layer is the metabolically active fat, and it correlates highly with chronic diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, and stroke, as we mentioned earlier in this tutorial. With the lead individuals, the superficial and deep adipose layers tend to merge together and actually form one layer. As the fat thickness in the waist grows due to lack of exercise or poor diet, then what happens is the fat separates into two compartments or layers of fat, the superficial and the deep adipose tissue. The importance of analyzing your measurement data graph is critical to ensure accurate measurement readings in the waist. 
Let's consider one scenario where you set the athletic type to elite and the software chose this first peak at six millimeters after taking your measurements. Using your reference of 25 millimeters, we know that six millimeters is less than a third of an inch of fat. But for this individual, it's obvious again that they have a noticeable fold in the waist. So the most likely characteristic peak is in fact this strong peak at 18 millimeters. Knowing this, you can step in and manually override the automatic peak detection in the algorithm by clicking on the peak at 18 millimeters and accepting the change by clicking OK. This forces the software to use this peak as the true fat muscle interface. Now, there may be instances where the ultrasound signal fluctuates despite having the correct athletic typing, especially with individuals who are extremely sedentary or obese. However, don't panic. You can always override any measurement if necessary, so please be sure to examine your measurement data graph to ensure the appropriate peak has been selected before saving your data. Once you've completed your analysis, the true body fat percentage is automatically calculated and displayed under the formula menu here. While conducting assessments inside a client's profile you've created, the body metric system allows you to compare previously saved measurement data graphs, a great feature to quickly demonstrate changes in fat thicknesses at the various site points. Clicking on the C button next to the points list brings up a window where you can search the dates of interest here from the drop-down menu on the left, as well as the site points. On the right side of the window, you can select dates and site points to compare the graphs, which clearly show change, progress, or regression in these areas. The top graph on either side represents the first measurement taken, and the bottom represents the second. The body metric system also gives you the ability to record your client's circumference measurements. To do this, simply double click on the position under the circumference measurement box. In this example, we'll select the waist. You can manually type in the measurement in inches and then select OK. Next, we'll go ahead and select the hip and input that measurement reading. Another easy way to do this is to simply click on the position field and just type in the measurement value. This gives you the waist to hip ratio located at the bottom of the page in this graph. In the next tutorial, we'll show you how to collect an image or a tissue cross-sectional picture using the scan feature. Thank you.